And now that you have an opportunity with Citrix's virtual apps and desktop solution, specifically we're talking about on-premise, let's take a moment to discuss how to choose the right option to provide a quote for your customer. And we start first with deciding what product we would actually need based on your customer use cases. So we have three options. We have Citrix virtual apps, Citrix virtual desktops, and then the combination of both for Citrix virtual apps and desktops. So quick summary, if you're leveraging Citrix virtual apps, you're gonna be virtualizing a server operating system in the back end. So some sort of you know, Windows 2012 R2, 2016, 2019, and that's gonna be the workload users will be connecting to. So either a server desktop or individual virtual applications. It's only available, I guess it, it is available in all editions. So standard, advanced, and premium editions. It's a concurrent only license. So that's extremely important to note. We'll go through what concurrent versus user device license is and compare and contrast on the next slide. But note that virtual apps is only available as a concurrent license. So next we have Citrix virtual desktops. This is if we want to just virtualize a desktop operating system. Think of like a, a Windows 7 or a Windows 10 operating system that users will be connecting to. So that's a one-to-one -one desktop, meaning once a user is connected to that virtual desktop, that's their desktop until they log off. So if we have a, a use case of 100 users, that's gonna be um, 100 desktops we would need at minimum. Whereas if we go with a server desktop, leveraging Citrix virtual apps, we might be able to get 10 or 20 users onto a single server desktop because it's multi-user aware. So that's definitely something to, to share and discuss with your customer. Citrix Virtual Desktops is a standalone. It's only available in standard edition. So just know that if they require any advanced capabilities, features like provisioning services, um, that won't be included in just Citrix Virtual Desktops standard edition. And I'll, I'll go through the different editions and, and how to choose between those in the upcoming slides. It's available as a concurrent or a user and device license. So you have the option of choosing um, between the two. And then if we move over to Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops, this really gives your customer the flexibility of choosing between a server or a desktop operating system, or of course, a combination of both. So they might have use cases where you know, some users need a, a virtual desktops, other users just need individual applications, and they can do that with virtual apps and desktop solution. It's only available in advanced and premium, so it's not available in standard edition. So just make note that when you make that quote request, either request one of those two editions that are available. And again, I'll go through what those are in the next upcoming slides. And then it does provide the capability for remote PC access, which essentially is a tool to virtually connect to a physical piece of hardware. Maybe you're working from home and you need to access your physical device from home remote PC gives that capability of, of virtualizing a physical workstation. And that, that's only available with Citrix virtual apps and desktops. So let's talk through concurrent and user and device because this is also critically important to know because it comes down to cost oftentimes as well as use case. So if we start with concurrent first, concurrent is a pool of licenses. So it's about twice at the price of a user and device license. And the use case really for concurrent is often for shift workers. So if we, we take an example of a hospital where a hospital might have three different shifts of, of nurses working in each shift, and we have a total of 150 nurses, either as an organization, I can purchase 150 user licenses to cover all 150 nurses, or I can just buy 50 concurrent licenses because I know there's not going to be any more than 50 users connecting in at one time and go that route. So I end up saving more money in the long run because I'm only purchasing 50 concurrent licenses versus 150 user licenses. So it ends up being a lower cost, even though a concurrent license is about twice, twice as expensive. So a user and device license, pretty straightforward. It's a named user license. And what's nice about Citrix is it will intelligently use the least number of licenses possible based on how a user is connecting into the environment. 
So for example, if I'm connecting to my Citrix environment from two separate workstations, maybe my laptop, as well as my tablet, it's only gonna use a single user license. And on the flip side, if we had two users logging into the same workstation, it's just gonna use one device license. So it intelligently will use the least number of licenses possible. And again, it's not available in Citrix virtual apps as a standalone product. Virtual apps is only available for a concurrent license. So it ends up being more affordable to go Citrix virtual apps and desktops together if you don't need that concurrent license type. And I will provide links that will go into more detail the different licenses, license types, but just note, when you do make that quote request, choose between concurrent and user and device. So let, let's talk about choosing the right edition. This is also critically important. And again, based on the, the product you're going with, some of these editions might not be available for each product. So again, Citrix Virtual, App, Citrix Virtual Apps does have all three editions, but Citrix Virtual Desktops is only available in standard. So if you needed advanced or premium, you'd have to move to Virtual Apps and Desktops. But if we start with standard, gives your base functionality. It gives you the capability to virtualize you know, server-based applications, desktops, a desktop OS. It has native multi-factor authentication built into it. So if you wanted to integrate an MFA provider with Citrix Storefront, which is that, that nice web UI users will connect to, it, it does provide that capability. It does provide the HDX user experience, which is really the backbone of, of what Citrix provides as far as their virtualization platform. Think of it as a, a higher performing version of, of Microsoft RDS. And if we move to advanced, we have enhanced capabilities. So we have the ability of enabling workspace environment management, which is an add-on feature to, to really optimize and manage the Citrix environment. So we can optimize things like the CPU usage, the RAM usage to get potentially more users onto a single server in the backend. If we're using like a server desktop as an example, we have ability to do delegated administration within Citrix Studio, the management console, so we can give administrators access to just specific pieces of the console that's only available in advance as well as some configuration logging so we can go back and see exactly who made what changes. Um, this is a big one. Provisioning services is only available in advance or higher, and that's a, an image management solution from Citrix. So I'm not going to go into it in this video, but note that it does oftentimes make it easier to manage images in the environment for um, large workloads, for a large number of workloads. And then lastly, if we go from advanced to premium, we also get some other capabilities like the ability to do Citrix app layering with advanced configuration. If we wanted to enable self-service password reset so users can reset their own passwords within storefront, that's an ability as well in premium as well as um, director, which is the, the monitoring and troubleshooting solution for Citrix. That includes premium edition as well. So you get more capability reporting, so on and so forth with director. So these are just some highlights. I really recommend what I do with, with my customers when I talk about the, the product edition. I'll send them the feature matrix, the virtual app and desktop feature matrix, and just say like, hey, we're gonna quote you for the, the lowest edition right now, but please take a look at the feature matrix, see if there's any capabilities that spark interest in you. If so, let's have a conversation. And if there's anything that you need in specific, we can always you know, provide a quote for, for that edition you're interested in. So definitely important to talk about this with your customers to discuss exactly what the best edition is for them. All right, so let's look at some other considerations. So the first thing you need to look out for is if there's any remote access requirement for your customer's use case. And if so, sure, they can definitely leverage a traditional VPN, but if they want a better approach, which is my recommendation, they should at least use a Citrix Enterprise Gateway VPX. So what this is, it's a secure appliance that sits in the DMZ. Users access it over SSL encrypted web traffic. They see a logon portal, and as soon as they log on and they click their Citrix resource, their, their virtual app or desktop, 
the gateway is responsible for proxying that connection externally to that internal resource. So it's a very a beneficial way for providing remote access into the Citrix environment. However, if they're also looking for high availability, so they need to ensure that there's very little downtime within the Citrix environment, they might want to upgrade that enterprise gateway to a Citrix application delivery controller. So not only does a Citrix ADC include the gateway component for remote access, but it also includes load balancing capabilities to ensure there's high availability and redundancy across the Citrix environment. So definitely note that there's different additions when it comes to the application delivery controller as well. I have an entire video series dedicated to that. So note that depending on their requirements, the standard edition might not be enough. They may have to, to move up to um, a higher edition for, for their application delivery controller as well. So virtual apps and desktops is only available as a subscription license as of October of 2020. So note when you do make that quote request, please put the terms you would like to see, one, two, three, or five years. Note there are discounts as your customer moves to a two or three year subscription. So that is important to share with your customer in case they wanna make use of, of those discounts. There's also some Microsoft license requirements. So if we look at virtual apps first, there's a Microsoft RDS component requirement from from Microsoft in order to be compliant with them to virtualize a Microsoft server operating system. So just know if your customer doesn't have any RDS licenses today, you should provide a quote to them for those RDS licenses if they're planning on leveraging Citrix virtual apps. And similarly, if your customer is going the virtual desktop route, there is a Microsoft VDA license requirement. So this is often an entitlement with various um, versions of, of, the, of Microsoft's desktop operating systems. So think of Windows 10 as an example. Windows 10 Enterprise does include the entitlement to that VDA capability, that VDA license. But if your customer doesn't have that today, definitely worth looking into that in order for them to be compliant with Microsoft. There's also SQL Server requirements from Citrix. So if your customer doesn't have any sort of SQL Server today, they might want to procure licenses for that. Otherwise they would have to use SQL Server Express, which is a free edition and good for small use cases. But if anything did happen, database corruption, there's, there's not a whole lot you can do with SQL Express. So we definitely recommend going with a full-blown version of SQL Server. And then lastly, of course, there are some infrastructure requirements for the Citrix environment. There's different components that are required for it to run. So you have things like a storefront server, a delivery controller, a license server, a monitoring server, so on and so forth. And these all have recommended sizing as far as CPU, RAM, and storage um, goes. So I did provide a link on the bottom of the slide. Again, we'll put it in the, the notes below. But this, this link is a, it's a very fun weekend, 150 page read. But in reality, if you just control F, search for scalability, it will provide recommendations for each component and how to size each of those components. So if your customer doesn't have the infrastructure to support the Citrix environment today, definitely worth having a conversation with them to talk about, hey, should we bring on and procure new servers for you, new hosts, or should we maybe leverage the Citrix cloud solution to, to ease that, that infrastructure requirement? So that's really everything for this video. Again, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Citrix licensing desk and they can get you in touch with me to, to address some of those questions. If you need somebody to, to jump on a call with your customer, you can always reach out to me directly as well. My email is ryan.freese at ingramicro.com. To spell my last name, it's spelled like fries plus an extra S, so fairly straightforward. Always happy to help out and Definitely good luck on your opportunity and I hope it works out for you. All right. Thanks everyone.